Tennessee Titans at the Indianapolis Colts. This is a very interesting spread sitting right now at one and a half or two in favor of the Indianapolis Colts. This thing has flipped twice. It has flipped to the Titans and now it has flipped back to the Colts. To, uh, 50 and a half to 51 is your total in this one. Steven, I'll start with you because I know you have a play on this one. You like not the side that I would have expected. You like the Indianapolis Colts, and you're just going to play them on the money line. You're not even going to take – you're not even going to uh, – you didn't even take the point when it was available to you. Yeah, I, I got them at plus 105 on the money line earlier this week. You're, it's That's gone now. I would still bet this up to minus one and a half on the spread. This is also a best bet this week from our lead writer, Eli Hershkovich. You can see his best bets every week at thelines.com. You note at the line movement, and listen, the Titans have been great the past two weeks. They have monster wins over their past two games. But what do the advanced analytics tell us in those wins against the Bills and the Chiefs? How did they do it? They got the passing game going. They were fifth in drop back EPA. They were first in drop back success rate in those two games. For the season, though, this is a 13th ranked team in weighted DVOA against an indie defense that is ranked 11th. They'll need to have the passing game going again, I think, to win and beat the Colts twice now in the first half of the season because the Colts are number one and number two in rush DEPA and success rate. They are fantastic against the run, and they did not have Quiddy Pay, Eli Notes, in the first matchup between these two teams, who was the number five rated run stopper by PFF. So, even though they got those two monster wins, there were still some warning signs for me for the Titans defense. They were still 16th in EPA and 21st in success rate in those two wins. And for the season, this is the number 22 weighted DVOA defense against the number 15 weighted DVOA Colts offense. So I just think this is a spot where the Indy offense has been steadily improving they had the ninth fewest expected points per play in its first three games, and now they are number five in their last four games, and actually number two if you remove the monsoon game that they just had to play in. So they have figured it out. Carson Wentz has figured it out, minus a couple of monsoon game slips of the ball out of his hand and bad decisions. But in normal situations, this game in a dome on the fast turf – I think there is a lot to like here about this Colts improving team, and I was happy to get plus money on them. Uh, I think, if anything, this game should be a pick em. And we have another uh, side here for the Colts backing is Brad. Brad, what do you got on the Colts in this one? Um, yeah, well, so Carson Wentz, we've been talking about for a couple of weeks on this podcast now, where obviously he missed all of training camp. Um, you know, he, he was new to the team and they started out terribly. He, they, then he had two sprained ankles and he was bad. Um, but in the last month or so, um, they've been a top 10 offense by, by EPA, by success rate. He's in, he's in top 10 of PFF grade. Um, he looks to have cleaned his mechanics up. If like, you know, if you, if you read about what he's doing there, um, and, you know, as I say, I buy it because I, I think he was he was hamstrung at the start of the season, and now he's uh, now he's coming into his own. Um, and so, on the other side of that, we've still got all the problems that I that I loved the Chiefs last week on this Titans defense. Right, they're, they're still twenty second in defensive DVOA, despite giving up three points to the Chiefs. They're, they're still banged up at corner, um, and you can be sure that Frank Reich, unlike Andy Reid, who was like early down runs. Like Frank Reich will attack this weakness at corner. Um, it'll be play action, it'll be RPOs, and it'll be to, to Pittman. Looks like T.Y. Hilton has a chance to play, last I checked. Um, so I, I think the Colts are playing, they're playing like a top 10 offense, and they're going up a, against the bottom 10 defense. Um, and so I like them to go over their team total, um, which is pinging all over the place with this with this line move. Um, but, you know, you probably get around 26 and a half. Um, and I, I thought that was a, a nice total. Yeah, 26 and a half on the Colts team total is where we're sitting right now. I, it looks like he might, but T.Y. Hilton might be tracking not to play. Didn't, didn't practice on Wednesday and wasn't seen out there doing much. And so, uh, could be one of those situations. That said, it does look like Braden Smith, their guard, 
Uh, he got back out on a Wednesday, which is a uh, you know odd for a guy that has missed as long as he had, which typically lends to that he's trying to get back out there for the week for him to be out there on a Wednesday. So their offensive guard and Braden Smith is going to be back out there on the Tennessee side of things. This is one of those that, I mean, listen, if you followed the career of Julio Jones over the last three or four years, you know how this goes. And he gets some sort of soft tissue injury, and you just kind of have to deal with that. And last week, he ends up leaving the game yet again. Hamstring injury, not practicing on Wednesday. Might try and give it a go. Uh, Steven, you're, you're a big fantasy player. I call it the Julio go which is like he goes and then leaves the game every single time like like, yeah he's gonna go but he goes and then he leaves the game every single time so it's like you can't really Julio being a go is not really like a go for just about any other player on the face of the planet so um it, it again he is he has said he is trying to get out there this week. He probably will try, and he probably will try, and he'll go run 11 routes, and then he'll end up back on the sideline. Again, uh, one of the good things for the Titans this week, that being said, after what was looked like a career-ending, horrible, like one of the worst things I've ever seen happen on a football field, uh, Taylor Lewan is practicing in full and is likely to be back out there for the Titans this week, um, which is pretty crazy. I thought that that was going to be a, a horrible, horrible injury on him. And that ended up not being the case. So he's back out there practicing for this team. I'm on the opposite side with the, of you guys. Um, I didn't see anything from Indianapolis, uh, in any time soon that leads me to believe that this team is any good still. Um, but look, they were at one point last week, they had more pass interference yards than they actually had passing yards in the game. Um, you can blame it on the wind and stuff if you want to, but they didn't really scheme anything either to scheme any, to scheme people open. I think Frank Reich is kind of a more of a, a paper genius than he is an actual genius when it comes to football. I think we're way too quick to crown a lot of these guys uh, looking at you, Kyle Shanahan, looking at you, Sean McVay with, uh, with, with these guys being, you know, so great at what they do. And then, you know, it's, it's uh they had one good season is typically a lot of the times what what happens with a lot of these people. And on the Tennessee side of the ball, I do understand that the Colts have been really good against the run. But there have been a lot of teams that have been really good against the run that for whatever reason, when Derrick Henry rolls into town, it's just a completely different story. The guy has been able to get it done. And the other thing that I really like about Tennessee is they're running a whole bunch more pa- uh, play action passes right now, which is, as we know, you don't have to establish the run, establish the run in air quotes. I'm being facetious. There's no such thing as establishing the run, but you don't have to establish the run in order to use play action passes, which is something that they were not doing in Tennessee really all last year for the majority of the season. And then these last three weeks, they've decided, Oh hell, look at this concept that everyone's been talking about for the last three years. Why don't we do that as well? And they've been utilizing much more play action passes and that has been working out really, really good for this team as well. Um, I had a plus, uh, I have a plus one and a half. I have a plus, uh, seven and a half as well. This was the team that I had paired up with, uh, in a teaser leg from Thursday night. You're probably listening or watching this after Thursday night football has already happened. So I might already have lost this bet. I don't know, but I paired it with, uh, I paired it with the Cardinals, uh, in, in that one. So I have this in a teaser leg with the Cardinals this week for, uh, for Tennessee being teased up to, to seven and a half. I, I'm still not a believer long term and even short term here in this Colts team. And um, they're going to have to prove it to me. And this will be a good prove it spot. So I could be proven wrong this week if the, if the Colts show up and beat the hell out of the Titans.